Well, a big hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode. I'm Stephen, and this is Yana. And today we're going to do a little bit more treasure hunting. We're hoping to find a few more Neolithic items, or Mesolithic, or Paleolithic. Um, I've actually been doing quite a bit of research the last couple of weeks on this particular area. And we're actually on a pathway from a Bronze Age settlement in Chelmsford, Essex. The Bronze Age set settlement, the um, Springfield Cursus, was discovered in the 1970s and it's kind of a protected site now. And there is a pathway leading northwards, true north, in a direct straight line from the Cursus all of the way to Norfolk to Sea Henge. And we are literally on the pathway right now. So we're walking through the woods. This is the pathway they would have taken thousands of years ago. Sea Henge apparently may have been used for burials. So they used to take the bodies, apparently, to Sea Henge, lay them by the ocean, and the sea used to take the bodies away. And where we've recently found quite a lot of Paleolithic and Neolithic items, that's actually, what I didn't realise at the time, was it was right directly on the footpath, on that pathway from Chelmsford to Sea Henge. So we're actually going to head out to another local field. We're staying on the pathway and we're hoping to find something a little bit further up. It's possible the location we have been searching may have just been a campsite but we're just going to test that theory by heading to the next field there's a public footpath close by so we're going to search along the public footpath and and hopefully find a few more items so here we go everybody enjoy the show <laughs> oh nearly got poked in the eye by a tree <laughs> okay, we're just walking up one of our local lanes and we're heading to our new location. We're staying on that footpath that I mentioned, the Neolithic Bronze Age footpath, which leads true north to Sea Henge. And we're not too far away. We've, we've not actually, well, we have cycled up here before, we've done a little cycling video, so you can check that out. Just, uh, like, just about here, I think. Oh, I've got my head. And we're hoping to test out our theory about that pathway. So we're hoping to find a few more items a little bit further up. And we're sticking to that route. So fingers crossed, we're going to find a few things. Most of the items we will find in this field will just be surface finds because it doesn't look like the field's been ploughed for a very long time. But it does look promising. And there are certainly a few interesting items. Tiny piece of flint there. Yeah, And we're quite fortunate today, it's actually lovely and warm. I think it's about 16 degrees, which is really nice for February. I don't know it's February. Well, it's April. Ah, it's not April yet. You're just wishing, Yana. I don't know Some of the items we find are a bit hard to tell until we get them home and give them a good old wash. You can actually check out some of our finds online. I'll put the link 
in the description, in, in the description it's it's my personal website and Jana and I use it to share our videos and we've also been listing all of the items we've been finding so you can go ahead and have a little view if you like and it'll give you a little bit of an idea hopefully if you're looking for your own items and a few things to look out for and we've certainly got a few interesting bits on there so feel free to have a little look we haven't got quite reached the end location where we're heading we're actually heading down right down onto the river just where the pathway went through and and both of these fields next to us the field just to the right we had a little look as we were walking up and we found a couple of in interesting bits a few bits that look like possibly hammers and we would like to check that field on the left as well so um, we might do that on the way back so but i do think both of these fields are worth a lot more there is it there. investigating so here we go we're not, we're not too far now from the um, river and we'll show you that guys when we get down there someone doesn't know how to open a gate <laughs> Like, there you go, well done, you're doing that. Oh. There you go, well done. Well done, you did that easier. Oh, there's another one at the top again. Yeah. Okay, Yara, we're going to check just, just here, just in that field, because this is on the pathway. So the pathway led just to the left of the ford and stretched out continuously in this direction towards Chelmsford. We're not going to Chelmsford, no. We're just, we're just going to check. This is our location and our field, so we're going to check around here. This, we're going to stay close to the footpath and have a check and see what we can find. See if we can find some more Neolithic, Mesolithic and some Paleolithic items, yeah? You ready? Um, hi everyone, it's Jana. Um, I am sitting here... Um, oh, sorry, you can't see me. I'm sitting here waiting for Stephen to finish Um, so um, I'm resting and he's he's looking he's got a bag of stuff now that looks quite an interesting piece actually that looks something mesolithic is the shape of that that looks like oh just dropped it just looks like a mesolithic hand axe and i'll have a better look at that when we get home and just here looks like it's made from the same kind of material and it's like quite a small hand axe just there. Okay guys, so this is actually pretty much the River Tur Valley, which I've mentioned on some of our findings on my website. So, and it's quite likely that they use this area for hunting on their way through to Chelmsford. Okay, we're just heading down to where the River Tur is, so we can take a little look. Yeah, shallow. It's shallow. Yeah. Okay, that's shallow. Okay. Yeah, well, that's a lot shallower, isn't it? You couldn't even, the last time Yana and I came down here, you couldn't even see this concrete plinth in the road. Yeah, I can see the bottom there. 
Yeah. Okay, Yana and I have had a bit of a clean up of some of the items that we've actually found during our field walking trip. And pretty much everything we've discovered is either Paleolithic or Mesolithic. And we found just one item which might be Neolithic. Um, most of the Paleolithic items are more handheld solid items, axes and stuff like that. Um, during the Mesolithic period, they become more advanced in their tool making. Um, although some of the items are still very crude, it's not until you get into the Neolithic period that things start becoming more polished and more refined. Um, you, you can also tell with some flint pieces whether the item was made all at the same time because when you nap a piece of flint for instance the stone of the flint um, quite often is black and once left in the soil over hundreds of years the flint changes color quite often it lightens to either a, a white or a brown or a gray so we've got a flint axe in the paleolithic period and we've got another one there. And it's by face, so it's been worked on both sides. And this piece here. And this piece here. Now we've actually found quite a few axes like this. Now the rest of the items are mostly Mesolithic. So this is the very first flint sickle that Yana and I have found. It's quite a small piece, but you can see that's been worked all the way around that and the shape. And our sickle would usually be used to remove um, small plants. Now quite close to that, we found this perfectly flat stone it's it's kind of rounded on the bottom but on the top that's perfectly smooth and I'm pretty sure this was probably used for crushing grain or um, plants and then here we have a hard stone although this particular piece may have been used as a grinding stone because you can actually see the wear along the edge there, through, right through the middle. It's kind of sunken in, and it probably would have been used to grind like that, holding that piece, and then use that piece to grind across the stone. And we have this perfectly sliced piece of rock here. It's been sliced completely flat on the other side, and, and I'm pretty sure that was probably another grinding stone. This is probably the biggest item that Yana and I have found. And at first I wasn't too sure if that was a natural formation of the stone. But then here, it looks like it's been ground in and worked to form quite an impressive Mesolithic hammer. So, to tie that on there. And we've got this piece here, this is Mesolithic, and I'm pretty certain that's another hand axe, but from the Mesolithic period. Now we found these two items, one we found a few days ago, and one, this one here, we found earlier today. And at first, I kind of put this to the side, because I wasn't 100% sure on what Yana and I was looking at. But then we found this, and they are pretty much identical tools. 
So they've got a flat bottom and they're kind of curved upwards like that. And in both of these items, there's quite a large indent there and there's an indent there. So I was doing a bit of research online and I think what Yana and I might be looking at on these two particular items is what's called a fire cup. Now these tools, if I'm correct, would have been used with, I think it's a bowstring and this tool and it's kind of, I'm not 100% sure how the bowstring would work, but you'd put the wood on and it would spin really fast and cause a flame with all the friction and they'd have some kindlings and dry grasses around here as well and create a fire. So, and if that's correct, I'm pretty sure these are pretty two rare items. So I'm quite intrigued about looking into this a little bit more. And we've got some pretty amazing scrapers too. But firstly, that's a Mesolithic flint core. So it would have been a black black piece of flint originally, but um, where it's been in the ground so long, that's actually gone a very coppery, kind of a brown color. So that's the core from the flint nodule where they were napping pieces off to create their Stone Age flint tools during the Mesolithic period. Now here we've got some incredible scrapers. So that's sunken in there. So that's perfect for your thumb because uh, we found that on quite a few of our scrapers and a few of our tools that um, edged in into the stone, there's been places to make a comfortable hold. So that's one of our scrapers just there. That's Mesolithic. And we have another Mesolithic scraper here. And that's kind of in a triangle. And that's a, quite a nice item there. And here, again, we've got the thumbprint just there. On this, again, I think we might be looking at a Mesolithic scraper. And it's completely rounded, so put your thumb there and you can use pretty much any side you want. And this scraper here, I actually think is much older than the Mesolithic period. I think we might have a Paleolithic scraper just here. And the one Neolithic item, do you want to show them that, Yana? Is a knife. So we have this very tiny little knife should we get that a little bit closer to the camera? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's... So, so you can see on this side, you can actually see what, what the flint is actually starting to turn a grey colour. And I'm pretty sure out of all the... And, and you can see it's been worked along the edge. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the only Neolithic finds that we found today. And we don't usually find a huge amount of Neolithic items in the areas we've been searching. We find pretty much Mesolithic and Paleolithic items. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that Yana and I live on quite an important alignment. Um, I didn't realise at first when we started looking for some of these prehistoric stone tools, but during a bit of research, I started reading in, looking at an area in Chelmsford, a Bronze Age, a Neolithic Bronze Age cursus. If you carry on northwards until you can reach no more, you reach Norfolk and the Wash. And right slap bang in the middle of that northern route is Sea Henge. So if you travelled true north from the Chelmsford Springfield Neolithic Bronze Age settlement and travel along this alignment, this pathway, it takes you through this field onwards. And once you reach Norfolk, there are 
some quite important Neolithic sites kind of either side of that pathway. So the pathway goes right through and, and there's like these little tiny Neolithic sites. You carry on until you can go no further and you reach Sea Henge. And it's believed that Sea Henge was used for burials. So they would place um, their dead loved ones and the waves would come in and wash the bodies away. So if true, if correct, and this alignment pathway that runs through these fields that we've been searching, it's quite likely that this might have been a Mesolithic and even earlier Paleolithic campsite which has been used for hundreds of thousands of years. Of course, with the Paleolithic period, you do have the interglacial period. So it's been closed with the glaciers. It's been closed and it's been open at certain periods where the ice has come forward. But I, I think it's pretty much always stopped just, just before you reach, um, just north of Colchester in Essex. I think, I think that was the, um, the end of the glacial the end of the glacier and um, so everything before that everything after that would have been foraging land and um, they, they would have come across from Europe um, across the land bridge which was still existed at the time and and search for big game and of course some of that big game would have been mammoths and um, giant deer um, of course, the giant deer and the mammoth is extinct now, but um, which is why Paleolithic tools are so clunky and so huge because you have to get through a mammoth's bone, and skinning a mammoth must have been quite a task. So, I think you mean a woolly mammoth. Yeah, a woolly mammoth. Yeah, it's the same thing—a mammoth or a woolly mammoth. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To think that right outside, you, you know, if you go back 10,000 years ago, mm. walking past would have been probably a big woolly mammoth. Yeah. And not very far from where we are in those fields we've been searching, there would have been like a, an early man campsite, which they would have used for hunting those big animals, those uh -huh. big game. Well, I, I guess that wraps everything up. So the link for the website is in the description and whatever you're up to enjoy and Jana and I will see you all soon we'll see you all soon bye so bye for now bye, bye. <laughs>